Yo, hey everyone, what's going on? Now, before I dive into the tutorial video, I just wanted to show you like the proof in the pudding because I'm out here. This is being filmed on OBS now with the uh, Fuji X webcam software uh, running the X-T3 with the 16mm 1.4. Excellent bokeh. Look at that right in the intro. What a great timing. Uh, really good bokeh on, the, uh, on this lens, which is doing well for the streaming side of things. But yeah, this is running uh, OBS on a PlayStation 4. I've got all this set up. I'm going to show you how I set this all up. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Hey everyone, what's going on? Hope you're doing well out there. So that little stream you saw in the beginning there, uh, I was using OBS and I ran that stream for like an hour and a half. The night before that, I did like a two and a half hour stream where I was playing different PlayStation games just to make sure that everything that I'd set up, you know, isn't just working for five minutes. It's a totally viable solution. It's a little bit uh, non-conventional and you'll see that when I show you how it's all going. But I just really wanted to test this whole uh, setup and make sure that the battery life of like the Fuji cameras can hold up over time. Because one of my first thoughts was like the, the battery life of video on the Fuji cameras isn't that great. But you know, I can tell you now that I did a two and a half hour stream and a full battery only lost one third. So if I was to be pessimistic and say that it even lost half the battery, that's like you could do a five hour stream on a single Fuji battery. And if you're a video shooter on the X-T3, you know that is incredible battery life. And the reason that I think the battery life is so well over streaming is because it's not using like the proper video functions. It's almost using like a live photo preview as the video. And I think that's the reason why there's like limited capabilities with the Fuji webcam software at the moment. It's because they're kind of like hacking things together. And if they're going to make things a little bit hacky on their end, then we have to get a little bit hacky on our end to get OBS up and running. I was so happy when the Fuji webcam software first got announced because it was really the missing link in my streaming setup, as I'm sure you're all aware where the streaming software or the streaming drivers, I should say, are far from perfect. It doesn't really work with a whole bunch of things. Uh, so I had to really muck around with a whole bunch of settings and programs to get things going. So I have a, yeah, like I said, I have a very non-conventional method, but I'm, I'm gonna stand by this. It totally works. Uh, so let's, let me show you how I've got everything set up in OBS. So before we go into the OBS settings, I'll quickly just go over my camera settings, what I'm using to get things going. So another thing that was kind of weird is that like as soon as the software dropped, I started YouTubing people. I, I don't want to take pot shots at anybody in specifically, but like so pretty much everyone that I looked at, their webcam setup was kind of horrible. Like it looked like they were using these sick Fuji cameras, but the end result was like, you know, a webcam. And I'm like, surely it can't look like that. And you know, when I uh, slapped the 16 mil 1.4 here onto the X-T3 and I pulled up my scene, with all the settings that I dialed in, things are looking good. This is like honestly the best scene that I've that you know I've actually seen. Uh, you know I'm using a bit of lighting here. I've got a softbox over over there. You can see my hands got a little bit of light. I'm in manual focus, which I think really helps because if I you know jut in and out of the scene, then you know it's not going to uh, sort of focus hunt on anything. So I think that's kind of crucial. I'll talk you through all the settings in a sec, but this is kind of like the crucial things that I did. Uh, the aperture here, even though it's a 1.4 lens, the depth of field is too razor thin. So I just set it to 1.8, it still gives it a nice background and everything. Uh, I've also got another little kicker light over here, and I've got the overhead lights on. So, you know, this is not a special room or anything, this is just a second bedroom. And uh, with a little bit of lighting choices that I had already, like shooting YouTube stuff, definitely helps. You know what, I'll turn everything off and we can see what it would look like for somebody who doesn't have external lighting. This is with this light off. Not a big difference, probably could take it or leave it. It just adds a little bit extra, but I'll turn the other light off. It's a little remote here. So th this sort of scene is way too dark. I would offset the camera and do things differently, but you know, I've got this stuff on hand and it really helps out. And honestly, even when I was streaming with a webcam, I'm still using external lighting because it doesn't really matter what camera you're using. The lighting is going to help shape the scene and make things look a little bit better. So if you're into streaming, regardless of the camera, lighting is definitely key. So just had a look at all the camera settings I got here. The ISO set to 400. It's a 1.4 lens, which I've set to 1.8. And then the shutter speed I got set to 1 over 50. And I'm using 1 over 50 here because our monitors flicker in 50 hertz. Uh, you're pretty much going to be using 50 or 60. I find that's just going to work for most people. But you know, it's not just the camera settings. It's not just the lighting. Another thing that uh, makes the scene look good is I used a uh, gray card to pull a nice white balance in this room because Originally, I was getting this super weird blue tint, and then I tried to do the white balance manually, and I was getting this green sort of like horror tint going on, which was kind of passable. 
but yeah, I use this card to dial things in and uh, the white balance is looking pretty good in the room. That makes a very big difference. And the last thing was the, uh, the picture profile. So even though I had the white balance looking good, uh, my skin was looking like too red. I mean, it's a little bit red now, but it was looking like pasty red before, which is not what it looks like in real life. So I just went through the different uh, film simulation modes. I'm using classic Chrome here. That kind of just looked the best in this kind of scene. All right, so here I've got OBS and we're just gonna quickly uh, create the scene that I had there in the intro. And all that was, was the PS4 in the background and then the Fuji webcam in the foreground. So I've set up a new blank scene here. And we're just gonna add the elements. So I'll add the PS4, uh, that's an existing element that I've got here. It's just got that set up. Now, normally uh, for like a webcam or anything else, you would just add a second video capture device. I'm just going to call it anything. So here we've got our drop down of uh, different things. And uh, if I go down, I'm just going to choose something random first. So I'll just do this Elgato thing. Uh, so we can see it does that. Elgato does that. So it's trying to use whatever we're, we're telling it to use. But for some reason, the Fujifilm one at the moment is really bugging out where it doesn't even change. Uh, before it just had the Fujifilm, like it was waiting for the camera to come on. And no matter what you did to the camera, if you would turn it on, off, change all the settings, it just wouldn't show in OBS. Uh, it's like really bugging out now because <laughs> now it's like not even changing from whatever the previous one was. But that doesn't change anything. The, uh, the reality is that the software is just not working by default in OBS. So let's just hold up here for a second. I'm gonna remove this element. Just to prove that it does work, I'm gonna open up Zoom and we'll take a look at the, uh, the webcam software working inside of Zoom. Now I should mention there's a weird intricacy to this whole thing where you actually need to close OBS and open up Zoom first for it to work. I guess it's like competing for the driver or something. I don't know why it does this, but it's just what I found in my testing. So I've just got Zoom open, I've closed OBS. I'll go into the video and here we have it. We can see a preview of the video. Uh, so I'm just gonna close that. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna start a meeting and that opens up a box over here. So we're not gonna join a meeting. And you know, I've got the camera set up to uh, full manual focus so I can change the focus there. I'm sure that's great on screen at the moment. So we've dialed in the focus. I'm gonna open OBS back up now. And uh, we've got our scene here. Now, you know, we've got the PlayStation scene here and we've got the Zoom scene over here. So uh, the little hacky method that I came up with is by doing a display capture. I'm just essentially capturing the desktop and then I'm trimming the desktop down. Uh, if you just hold Alt, then you can uh, trim the desktop. So I'm just gonna trim it. So look, on first, uh, on, on first trial, I thought this isn't the most elegant solution. It's a little bit hacky. But you know what? It's fine. I've run about five hours of streaming doing it. It has totally held up. The battery life on the Fuji X-Cam has been totally fine. And you know, it's looking great, you know? It might seem a little bit hacky because I'm just screen capturing the, uh, the desktop, but you know what? It works and it works great. Uh, of course, if you come along here and you move this, then that's gonna happen. So it's not the most like elegant solution. But uh, realistically, if I'm streaming, I'm happy to just leave the window there. I've actually got a second monitor, which I just don't use for streaming. So I'll uh, put this on the second monitor. And then I've got a whole desktop monitor to do whatever I need to do during the stream. Yeah, obviously I know it's not the best of methods. It's very, very hacky, but at the same time it worked. Uh, I had some suspicions that things might not work, which is why I wanted to run like five, six hours of streaming before I film this video and put it out there. But realistically, if it works and nobody can tell the difference, then you know, does it really matter? It's obviously not the most elegant solution. I, of course, I wish the drivers would work natively with OBS and other applications, but at the same time, uh, it's got really good battery life. You know, as far as the, the quality goes, it's only that 1024 by 768 quality. But when you're, when you're sort of smashing the box to such a small size here in the stream, it's hardly noticeable. The Fuji glass is great. The, the color profiles, the white balance, the like total control that you have over this kind of camera versus a traditional webcam is just so much better. You know, I wouldn't be rushing out buying a Fuji webcam to use as a streaming solution. Of course not, there are much better cameras to do that. But if you've got an X-T2, X-T3, whatever the other supported cameras are, uh, you know, you've essentially got a free, amazing webcam. So yeah, I'm so happy that this finally works because it means I can stream my PlayStation, use my Fuji camera, 
get five hours, six, seven hours worth of uh, streaming out of it. Such a great, great solution. What an amazing upgrade to the Fuji X system. I'm so happy they brought this stuff out. And you know, hopefully it gets better with time. They bring out some better drivers. It almost feels like they really just wanted to rush this out to get something going. It does work. It's not the best, but who cares? It works. I'm so happy I got it going. So there we have it. That's my method for getting everything going. Hopefully you can get it set up uh, with no issues. If you have any problems, just uh, drop a comment in the section below. I might be able to help out or somebody else might be able to get to it. Uh, alternatively, if you have a better method that you think is a little bit better put together than what I've got going on, also let me know. I'm super interested to hear what uh, people are doing. Hopefully in the coming months, there may be some developments from Fuji where things are a little bit more stable and won't have to go to these sorts of measures to get it going. But you know, as it is, it works. It's totally fine so far. And you know what? If you like what you see, uh, smash that like and subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Uh, I've got some other Fuji content going on. I've actually got this uh, 23 1.4 lens out here on loan. So I'm going to use this for a couple weeks and maybe uh, drop a review on it. But yeah, uh, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video as always. And I'll catch you on the next one. Look at that. Oh, so close. Oh, you little...